In the previous videos, we learned the basic setup and the layout. We learned how to set up your practice, and now we are ready to start entering patients. Now, it's very easy. You go to this button on the top left corner, and you click on New Patient. You can To enter a patient, these three information is enough. Those marked in red, date of birth, sex, and the name should allow you to create a patient. Now, you can enter the patient in a detailed format as well, and we will show you how to do that. So essentially the earlier one is when you don't have the time, you're just in a flurry of people, you want to enter the patient name and book him for an appointment. That's pretty much how you can do it. Now going into a detailed way, External ID is something that you have been using for previously in your previous system, in your file. You can enter those systems there. Social security number. license ID. Now these are user-defined columns where a particular practice has something that they want to do or something specific to their practice they can enter that and later on I'll show you how you can add even more columns with specific um, functionalities for those columns where we talk about the layout based forms in the subsequent videos but uh, let's go on. Everywhere you see this button next to this drop down, it means you can add something there what we have not added in the list. So earlier I showed you the list and this goes and get added in that list, particular list. So, so now we have Nigeria also there. So. Now the choices become very important. Now uh, the patient can say, I want to see Dr. Nation. I want my prescription sent to this pharmacy. Then he has to have read the HIPAA notice. He can say, leave message with my wife or somebody. All these other choices are important because whenever in the system you can configure sending an SMS or an email or uh, snail mail or telephone messages so unless the patient has allowed that to happen the system will not do that so you will have to say yes now the patient portal this is very important because uh, 
OpenEMR has a free patient portal where any patient can log in and connect to that particular EMR and see his uh, data that is allowed by the doctor to see and for which you can uh, search for a video on the patient portal of OpenEMR. So only if it is set to yes will he be able to use that facility. Now if you want to add more uh, ethnicity, you can go and add it in the list, like we said earlier. This is for marketing purposes, if you want to know where this person came from. Of course, he's not deceased, he just walked in, so we don't have to do that now. Now comes the insurance part. So. This is where the list from the insurance comes up. If you select self, all the information will automatically be filled up. What is the scope payment? 25 or 20, whatever. If he has a secondary insurance, you can do the same thing. So I think uh, we are ready to save this patient. So the patient is saved. Now we are still not done. If you are going through the whole list, usually most practices has a, have a new patient questionnaire from where they can enter all the history, his issues and all that. So when you, when you go up here, you can see a button called history. And when you select edit, all the information that he has entered in this new patient questionnaire, you can fill those things up here. And again, this can be changed according to each practice, how they want the history to be saved. Again, you can add more columns according to the speciality that you are practicing. Now, his 
past medical issues, allergies, all those sort of things you can enter. As you can see, you can search for the ICD codes. It shows up here. Of course, I know that asthma and 200 is different, but you can save that stuff. You can do the same for allergies. If you don't know the diagnosis code, you don't have to enter that even, so you can just put it there. And so what happens is, you will get the allergies in red, his past medications. Similarly, you can add the past medications here. All those sort of things show up here, his immunization history. And this is the new prescription which you will of course not enter while uh, you are entering a new patient. Now there is one more thing that you can do. Documents. Uh, I explained this in a previous uh, uh, video how documents can be added or uploaded. So let's say that he has given you his ID card which you have scanned. see the patient's ID card as well and you can also upload uh, for everything you can upload each one as a PDF or a JPEG can add a note to this particular document of course this is my IRS document so I'm not going to show it much further but you can add whatever you want in the document because not everybody can delete a document, only the admin allowed or access controllers can delete a document. And so on and so forth. Previous medical records, patient photograph.
So essentially, now we have created a patient, we have entered his history, his choices, his past medical history, everything. So this is how simple it is to create a patient. Like I said, instantaneously, three information and you have a patient. Detailed, you can do it this way. And uh, now we'll go to the next video. I thank you all for watching this video and hope this helps you.